starting a new course on uh, how to become a brilliant writer. And the first, we just dropped the first in the, in the series. Uh, it's titled, The Number One Lesson to Becoming a Brilliant Writer Revealed. And I just wanted to share this with you. Back, uh, back in the 19, early 1970s, um, a friend of mine owned an ad agency, and, and he and I started a small business together, an herbal tea company. And he took me under his wing in his ad agency. I was uh, about you know, six or eight years younger than Terry O'Connor, maybe five years younger. I'm not sure how much older than me he was, but uh, he'd been in the business for a while. And, uh, you know, he had some pretty good clients. We, we did the work for Kellogg's. We did their shelf talkers. We did the, the cover, uh, the box, the, the outside of the box for corny snaps. <laughs> I don't even know if they still sell them. Um, but it was a sugar-laced sh uh, cereal. Uh, and we, did, we had the Michigan National Bank and whatnot. So anyhow, I wanted to learn how to write advertising copy because I was working with Terry. And so this guy, Joe Sugarman, was running a course in New York City, and he was the mo one of the most famous copywriters in the country. And so I saved for months and months and months and flew out to New York and attended his class. And he said, here's the number one mistake writers make. They think they're writing to an audience. And by the way, I would add, it's the number one mistake that people on radio and television make too. Because there is no audience. I mean, there, there may be 6 million people listening to me right now. There may be, you know, I mean, my HartmanReport.com gets about 2 million page views a month. But people, million, a million people are not reading it, you know, all together. Every single piece that you write, and, and you know, if you're on radio or television, every person who's listening to you is hearing it as a singular experience. They're, they're sounding out those words in their own head. They're hearing what you say as if you're talking to one person. So when you write, you need to trick your brain into writing in a conversational style. And, and what, he, what Joe said is the way you do that is you think of somebody you know, somebody you like and care about, and somebody who would have an interest in the topic you're writing about. And then you write the article to them or you write the ad copy to them. And what that does, in fact, you start out, you put a you know, piece of paper in the typewriter or bring up a, a document and say, dear Margaret, you know, dear Aunt Marge, here's, you know, that, that, and you just start out that way. In fact, uh, the, the piece that I published yesterday, and I talk about this in the article at wisdomschool.com, I, I wrote to Ron Kenyatta, who is, you know, uh, started a new Substack uh, newsletter. And, you know, we've talked about the art of writing, he and I many times, uh, not on the air, but kind of in back channel. And uh, so, you know, you just write it to somebody. And what happens is your brain just kind of drops into a conversational mode. And now your stuff isn't dry and boring because you're not writing to an audience. You're writing to a person. So that's the number one lesson to becoming a brilliant writer. And I would add, you know, if you want to do a podcast or if you want to do a, a radio show or a TV show or anything else, podcasts are the most common. Again, just always think that there's just one person on the other end who's listening. You're talking to one person. I'm talking to one person. A, it's a lot less intimidating. And B, it, it causes you to personalize, basically, humanize everything you're saying. Because we talk to individuals differently than we talk to crowds, right? So you can find that over at wisdomschool.com. We'll be right back.